what's up guys and welcome back to the channel today we're going to be working on troy's camaro a little bit more we're going to be installing the tick performance lower control arm brackets so let's get these things unboxed and we'll show you what you get whenever you order a pair of these Now that everything's out of the box, I'm gonna kinda of go over what everything is and what you get in your kit and its purpose. So, we have our main brackets here. This will be the driver's side, and this will be the passenger side. And your bolt is always gonna go in from the outside, so if you get confused which side is which, just remember the bolt head has to be on the outside or you can't take it out. So these brackets come TIG welded together, already pre-assembled. Matt does all the welding on these. They look phenomenal. They also come with a different rod end. Now, when you get these, you're going to have to switch out the rod end that's on your lower control arm currently and put these in. The reason why these brackets being narrow, they do not require any kind of misalignment bushing like your lower control arm currently does in your factory chassis. They do, however, have pretty good misalignment capability. This is good because different rear ends have different spacing on their brackets for the lower control arms. These are actually spaced a little bit to the inside of the uh, original location instead of the dead middle, they set to the inside. So if you're maybe one degree or two degrees like pointing out or pointing in based on your rear end location of the, or the brackets on the rear end, it's not gonna matter because there's enough misalignment in this to accommodate for that. And one or two degrees really ain't gonna matter anyway because there's they're not really perfectly straight on these cars from the get-go. So you also get a military grade bolt, meaning that the, the shank or the uh, shoulder, I should say, is all the way through. So your shoulder is going all the way through till the threads start. So all the contact on the bolt is on the shoulder, not the threads. Now that, I might be splitting hairs, but when we're talking about bolts, if you can get the contact point off the threads, that increases the strength because the bolt is actually thicker where the threads are not, if you really think about it. You'll also get four of these locking washer sets. Now these don't have a retaining nut on the back side of any kind. They're just a threaded billet piece that's welded in here. So when they screw in, there's no way for them to lock unless you have these locking washer sets. So don't use these more than a time or two because they'll lose their locking ability. That's why they send you a couple extra ones. As far as the plates, we've got two laser cut squares, two rectangles. These will be your filler plates that you weld in. Because you'll see when we start installing them into the car, you're going to have some gaps to fill and stuff like that. So these will get you really close on getting those gaps filled up. That way you can uh, brace these back to the chassis because you're going to be cutting the outside out that's originally there. So let's go over on the car and uh, let's start cutting the spot out for these and get them installed. So before I get going with the cutoff wheel, I just want to show you how it looks in the car before we cut any of the material away. Coming over here, the first thing I did was switch out the rod ends. And I did this so I could uh, borrow the misalignment spacer 
to take up some space in the bolt that they provide with the bracket. Now, when you do this, you can screw the bolt in from the back side and you can uh, pretty much mock up the bracket exactly where it's going to weld. Make sure it's pushed all the way against the bottom of the floor pan here. Make sure it's flat all the way down here. Now you're gonna have gaps here and gaps on the bottom, but this is where your sheet metal pieces are for to fill those gaps whenever you go to weld it. One thing you need to consider when you mock these up is most of the time these cars, these tabs are not flat. They're, you know, bowed out a little bit or whatever, and that really doesn't matter when you're running a big misalignment uh, spacers on your lower control arms. And it probably doesn't matter on this really either because your lower control arm rod end still has a, a bunch of misalignment capability. But just for a visual aspect, you want to make sure it's straight up and down. Now ours, we've got 179.9, 180 if I hold my mouth right. So we're pretty good. But I only achieved this because I took a sledgehammer and beat the inside of this. Now this has the heavy duty subframe connectors on the outside. So I, it took a pretty good amount of effort and uh, wailing with the hammer to get it bent in to where it was flat or where the bracket would lay flat. It was like 177 and a half before. So it was, it was actually like that. And that's not really that big a deal as far as the performance end of it but the visual aspect will drive some people crazy. So just before you start welding these things up for good, uh, put an angle finder on the bottom and see if they're square before you start making anything permanent. Now the next thing I did, I made myself a cut line with a square. Uh, you can't really lay the square here because these kind of angle down. So just use the level on the square and do a line straight up and down because we're gonna be cutting this whole outside tab off. Once we get to the top area there, where I've got it drawn out to cut might be a little bit small, but you're basically mimicking what is done from the factory here so you can get the bolt in and out of that top hole. So that's pretty much it. I mean, there's no really measure, special measuring tools required, no measuring tape, you know, maybe an angle finder, and you're good to go as far as mocking these things up and getting them ready. So I'm gonna take these brackets out now and I'm gonna get the cutoff wheel in there and I'm gonna clean up everything, sand up everything where I can get my pieces of sheet metal in there to fill the gaps, get everything mocked up and we're gonna weld this side in. So now that everything is cut out, I put it back in here to make some sanding marks. Just kind of marking where the edge of it is. So I'm not just over sanding everything that really don't need to be sanded. But you can see right here, this is where your long rectangle piece of metal is gonna fit. Let me go over here and get it and show you. This is gonna be your filler panel for right there. Kind of closes that in. And what I'm gonna do on the bottom, I'm actually gonna hand cut a piece because this subframe connector and stuff kind of adds a little bit of work. It's gonna have to be done on this car. I'm gonna make one piece that goes around here and kind of L shape and closes that entire area in. So, uh, the square they send you will assist you if it doesn't have the subframe connector, but on this particular setup, I'm going to just hand make a piece. That way it's one solid piece through here and not just a bunch of little pieces.
so this is going to wrap up the install on this side i'm not going to make you watch the other side because we're basically going to be repeating the same thing we did on this side on the other side but just showing you in detail how everything looks installed you can see the piece of metal they provided i used down through here welded it to the bracket and to the edge of our subframe connector which if you didn't have a subframe connector it would be to the edge of the original uh, tab for the lower control arm bolts on the bottom just for our setup i cut a one piece little l to fill this gap in right here uh, it just worked out better for me to do that and look cleaner on this setup weld it all the way basically every crack there is you want to weld all of them up weld it all the way around the back side all the way up weld to the top and around and just you know weld everything that you can get to i guess you could go in here and splatter this with a mig gun i really don't think it's necessary but you could if you wanted to so this hole up here i'll show you the bolt how it kind of goes in so that's what you want you don't have to cut much out right here to make this happen so just keep in mind the more you cut out of any of this area the weaker it's going to get especially if your car is really fast you don't want to be taking away any strength out of this area so that's basically it pretty straightforward pretty clean I wouldn't be afraid to tackle this in my garage if I just had basic tools. Uh, this isn't like putting torque boxes in a Fox body where it's, you know, a nightmare cutting all the stuff out. I've never done it, but I've seen pictures and stuff. And, you know, this is a pretty easy install. Pretty much anybody can handle this. So again, the basic concept of this is increased bar angle on the lower control arm. When you lower the car down, you're losing bar angle. You're losing your ability to get the car to separate super fast. So you want to get the bar angle steeper where it'll separate faster, plant the tire, increase your 60 foot, you know, so on. And uh, Jonathan with Grub Worm, I think he's been a 106, 60 foot, which is pretty fast for a 28 inch tire and a uh, H pattern transmission. So I'm sure he'll go faster as he keeps, you know, dialing in the setup. But so far, that's what he's been. And that's, I think that's doing something for a factory suspension F body. So pick your pair of these up, tickperformance.com. I'll post the link in the description uh, to these things. So pick you up a pair, get them installed, and go faster. So I hope you learned something. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to our channel. See you guys. Let's check out a couple of grub worm videos that really show off the separation that's made possible by these adjustable brackets. <laughs> 